Hello and thank you for joining us. My name is Catherine Graham. I'm a theatre maker and researcher, um, so a lighting designer and associate artist with Theatre Re, as well as a lecturer in theatre at TFTI, the Department of Theatre, Film, Television and Interactive Media at the University of York. So I'm extremely pleased to be able to speak to you in this context um, with this event that is hosted by both very lovely institutions. I should say, right from the off, that I am speaking to you live, but from the past. I am pre-recording this talk for reasons of technological security, but also to ensure that we could have accurate subtitles on this video, which we should have. Um, so if you have come here through Eventbrite, this talk is pre-recorded, but it still remains an interactive um, event. I will be here with you in the uh, technological ether as you're watching. So if there are any um, questions or thoughts or points of clarification or expansion that you would like, um, then please do put those in the chat um, section at the bottom of this video and I will be really delighted to respond. I'll also be running a Q&A after the video, again in that chat section, um, for any questions or discussions we might want to have. Um, so we'll run that for about a Q&A length of time, so say about 20 minutes or until we run out of steam, I'll be answering questions and thoughts there. So that's the admin out of the way. I think that's all the logistics I needed to share. We can move on to the substance of the talk, um, which is light in performance. Um, my absolute favourite thing to talk about. Um, I just enduringly think that light is so cool and so exciting. As a material and as a practice, endlessly, it's endlessly interesting to me. Um, so this talk on that vein will be in two parts. In the first part, um, I'll principally be sharing some ideas um, about properties or, as I like to think of it, behaviours of light that feel interesting or instructive. And in the second part, um, I'll be honing in more specifically on um, the practice of lighting design within the context of Theatre Rees work. Um, so of course all lighting designers are different, all processes are different. Um, and what we might do in Theatre Re might be different to what I might do in, in another company or in another context. Um, so we're really looking at how we might draw the sorts of properties or behaviours of light that I'll talk about in the first part of this um, talk into a very specific practice um, with Theatre Re. So I'm conscious that some of you may have come to this talk from uh, a range of contexts or interests. Some of you may be interested in light um, or design practices in performance. Um, some of you may be interested in the work of the company and keen therefore to hear a little bit more um, about how, how those shows get made. Um, so again, I would hope that the um, chat section could be a, a productive space if you're not getting enough of whatever you have come for as we're trying to cover all of that ground. Um, lovely. So, one of the things that I think is really interesting um, about light is the way in which it's been understood, I suppose, as a fabric of the theatre. Um, Robert Edmund Jones in The Dramatic Imagination, which was initially written, I think, in 1941, um, writes that spotlights have become part of the language of the theatre. And I think there is something very interesting about um, associations of stage lighting and artifice that are um, really deeply connected to understandings of the theatre. But I think not unrelatedly, um, there is also an overarching or an abiding sense of the technical um, that runs through lots of engagements or practices um, with light in thinking about where perhaps light sits in the broader theatre ecology. Um, so, uh, one of the very first lighting designers, or one of the first people to um, be really consistently credited as a lighting designer as a specific role, um, was the pioneering lighting designer, US lighting designer, Jean Rosenthal. Um, and she writes uh, at various points in her career, 
um, about being dismissed as a bloody electrician with notions, um, which I think is evocative of this kind of um, art v craft uh, debate that has continued to roll on in various guises. Um, in the UK, the Association of Lighting Designers um, run a brilliant journal called Focus, um, the tagline of which is more art, less tools. And certainly, um, there are plenty of publications on light, uh, recent publications on light, that are interested in um, creating a sense of dis distance, I suppose, between technical processes and the kind of art or dis kind of decision making that underpins art, um, light as an aesthetic practice. Um, so it's important to note here, I think, that um, the skill level of lighting technicians and lighting programmers or the kind of um, technical knowledge that designers draw on in the, in the process is extremely high. You know, we're talking about systems and processes that are, are complex, that are time sensitive and that are constantly subject to change. Um, uh, so it's a really skilled profession. Lots of it is quite complex. Um, and I'm certainly not interested in fighting for a hierarchical distinction between technological processes or technical processes and art processes, especially not in the context of the 15 months or however long it's been that we have all just lived through. Um, but I am interested, I suppose, in moving beyond a sense of um, uh, purely technical um, concerns or the attendant concerns of, of light as something facilitative um, rather than something creative. I'm interested in, in almost the next set of questions, right? Um, thinking about as we understand light has become, um, uh, has been understood as a, um, a rich kind of dramaturgical or aesthetic process. Um, also worth thinking about, you know, what's really at stake there. Um, what's happening as light is changing in a performance, aesthetically, dramaturgically, um, experientially. Um, and it's an exciting time to be thinking these thoughts. The field of light research um, has been expanding um, in really exciting ways. Um, so Scott Palmer's research looks at uh, what he's calling creative light. So really thinking about light as a creative force in the theatre, both um, on stage as a material um, that affects performers and audience members, and indeed in processes of theatre making. Uh, Christopher Baugh similarly um, explores the, the transformative effects of the evolution of technological and staging practices. Um, in ways that move us beyond kind of binaries of technology and art or, or technical processes and aesthetic processes um, in really rich and exciting ways. Um, more interesting or more recently, um, Kelly Zuzulka's work um, has been exploring the agency of lighting designers in the process of making performance work. Um, so she's exploring um, the work that lighting designers, lighting programmers and directors or choreographers are doing together um, in, in really exciting ways that are starting to expand, I think, um, ways of understanding what, um, how we might view um, these processes in, within the kind of wider um, creative ecology of the theatre. Um, there are also lots of really exciting pieces of writing on darkness in performance. For me, if you are designing light, you are also designing darkness, absolutely. So works like Adam Alston and Martin Welton's edited collection of Theatre in the Dark, um, or Yaron Schildkraut's work exploring darkness and atmospheres in performance are really instrumental in thinking about um, an expanded understanding of what light might really have to offer to theatre practice um, more broadly. In my research, I am interested in what I've been calling scenographic light. Um, so thinking of light as a material that's inscribing meaning in space and time. So in that work, I am indebted to 
all of the um, researchers and writers that I have just mentioned, as well as plenty more who are writing on light in other contexts, um, as well as um, researchers and scholars of scenography in its um, expanded and contemporary context. Um, so that's, I suppose, the scholarly context um, that I'm uh, loosely drawing on in this talk. Um, but to turn now a little bit to light as a material, um, what is the stuff and substance of it? Um, I find it fascinating to think that light is both a really extraordinary material and also truly the most ordinary. We are immersed in light all of the time, um, always somewhere um, on a spectrum of light and dark or spectrums of qualities of light. Um, it's not always something that we perceive or pay attention to um, or feel directly consciously influenced by, but we are always somewhere in relationship with light. Um, so I think about times when my uh, attention drifts at my desk and I'm uh, struck by how much the light changes outside my window, um, or thinking about perhaps how different it feels to be you know, outdoors or indoors, or being outdoors at the point where day becomes evening or evening becomes night, um, or how it feels to be, I don't know, in a harshly fluorescent lit room or a, you know, a soft candle lit, um, I'm gonna say restaurant, but I can't imagine being in a candle lit restaurant ever again, who knows? Um, the point is, I suppose, that there are always real differences um, that we're moving through lots of different textures and feelings of light um, at all times. If, like me, you are someone who spends, for instance, cold, wintry evenings um, lighting lots of candles or putting on lots of tiny little lamps, then you'll have a real sense of um, how crafting the light around us in our lived environments um, is something that can be really impactful in our lives beyond the theatre. Um, and there's actually some really interesting research on precisely this phenomenon of how um, people use light in their own homes and kind of domestic settings or how people respond to light in um, urban settings in, in other areas of scholarship. So human geography produces some lots of really interesting um, work on this. There's lots of different ways, I suppose, of thinking about um, how we situate ourselves in relation to light um, in, in general ways as well as in quite specific ways. So immediately light is something that is multiple. Um, we sometimes talk about light as kind of binary forces, light and dark, um, warm or cold, light is here, light is there, but there's much, much more texture available than that. Um, and what it means to be in light can um, really change depending on the context. Again, I suppose, interestingly, lots of this is around language and the kind of specificity that we might have available to us to articulate what we mean by um, the bodily um, and affective experience of light. Um, so in any context, so on a stage or um, in life, an object or a person, anything, will look different depending on how it's lit. Um, and that might be to do with the direction of light, the colour, the quantity, the intensity, um, something that's being lit from in front or behind uh, will feel very different. Something that's being directly lit might feel different to something that is um, being indirectly lit. Um, something that's being silhouetted against something else or a figure that's right on the fringes um, of light. Um, as Scott Palmer says, light in this sense determines not only what is seen but also how we look. Um, so what's interesting to me here I think is that um, either by perceiving or in a, a design context by making even very minute changes we can really transform how something looks in a given moment. 
or the relationship between any number of things in a given space, um, the relationship between an object, a body, a space, or the relationship between any of that and light itself. Um, so if you have a number of bodies in a space um, and they have different relationships to the light or are lit in different ways, um, there, there's more um, play that might happen there, right? We're creating a sort of texture um, of what it is to be a body in a particular, um, I suppose, charged theatrical or aesthetic space. Um, you know, we often think um, a lot of um, lighting design is also thinking about proximity and distance. So in this room that I'm in or on this screen um, that I am in, to be close to a light source might be um, something tiny to be right here. Um, on a stage, you know, close could be right here, but far might be 5, 10, 20 metres away. Um, so there, there's a sense of um, uh, scale and distance um, also feels interesting to kind of play with. Um, also might think about things like the relative brightness, um, right, lights that can dim from absolutely nothing to dazzlingly bright, um, and what that might do, I suppose, to our experience of watching something, um, that we go on that scale um, from not seeing, or straining to see, or seeing, or then again straining to see as something becomes um, perhaps uncomfortably bright. Um, so there's lots of, I suppose, quite indirect ways in which light is giving things to visual experience. Um, there's a really nice example of this actually in Richard Pilbrow's book, The Lighting Art, um, where he takes a single actor and a single light um, and through a series of photographs is exploring what that one actor and one light um, look like working from a variety of angles, so from in front, above, behind, to, oh, where, where's my camera, um, from one side to another, um, all the way around, and, and we see really the actor looking um, quite starkly different in each of these images. Um, so that's sort of taking, you know, one body and one variable um, of the same light from different angles, we can start to multiply um, all of the other variables that might be available to us in light. Um, so light is multiple, it's slippery, um, it's dependent on lots of things. Light itself will also look different depending on what is in it. Um, so a light on an empty stage um, might look very different to light when an actor is in it might look very different to when uh, to light with an actor in a different costume um, is in it. It's multiple and slippery in lots of different directions, I suppose. Um, making it possible to sculpt with light in all sorts of ways. It's a really malleable, plastic sort of material. So in performance, you're thinking about what is lit, um, but also much more deeply about how things are lit and how that knits together um, in terms of relationships with everything else that is in or out of light. Um, Nick Moran calls this looking for the right light. You know, how do we know that light is right for a particular moment? That lighting design isn't just about getting light into a space, but is about crafting um, a light that is right for that in a way, in whatever that happens to mean for the artistic or aesthetic context um, of a given show. Um, so given this multiplicity, it won't surprise you that there are lots of different ways of thinking about what light does in performance. And also lots of different things that light might do in performance. It's not only that we think about it in different ways, but also that um, light itself might perform um, in different ways or uh, react and respond differently depending on the, the full theatrical or performance context. Um, so we're kind of thinking about the lots of things that light does in performance, both at the level of the sort of functions or operations of light on stage and at the way of thinking how we conceive of light within the whole theatrical offer. 
Um, so there's a quote from the German theatre director Dieter Dorn um, that I often come back to, I really enjoy it. Um, I'll, I'll read it to make sure I get it right. Uh, which is to say, and here I'm quoting, in everyday context, contexts, light serves to make existing things visible. On stage, however, it creates a new reality. Created light helps us to thrust forward into spaces that establish and nurture their own reality. Helps us to thrust forward into dimensions that are different from the ones we experience every day. End quote. Um, I really like that as a piece of writing for me. There's something really evocative um, in that of the ways that um, Perform that in performance light can um, make things feel a little bit magic, right? To help make something new and distinct and um, live and breathe in a way. Um, this idea of thrusting forward into new dimensions, um, of nurturing uh, their own reality. Um, it feels exciting in that regard. But this, I suppose, as a, as a proposition, it also connects with me for, um, with a wider argument of the value of what we're doing, right? Um, so pushing against the, um, perhaps, what had been prevailing assumptions about um, the role of light, and indeed design more generally, um, as something facilitative or decorative, right? Secondary to um, the work of, say, writers or actors. Now again, I'm a huge fan of the work of actors, directors, writers, so I'm not um, at all interested in trying to leverage the value of light or the value of design against anything else. Um, but I am interested in acknowledging or exploring, prodding into this whole aesthetic offer of what performance is, what it is to experience performance. Um, which feels to me um, deeply weird and deeply exciting. Um, so I think it's important not to get um, too locked into perhaps set um, uh, or inherited ways of thinking about you know what's going on. Um, you know, and for me that's simply that the the sum um, should be the whole should be greater than the sum of its parts, right? That so what's happening. Um, in theatre is a multimodal art form that's being that's pulling together um, in lots of different ways. Um, so as a lighting designer, one of the interesting things that you get to do is you get to see the work emerge in rehearsal room spaces. So away from stages, away from dark theatres, um, uh, and to see that uh, the work in that um, context. Now in theatre re, um, We've always worked to try at least to include um, theatre time as part of our R&D or rehearsal processes. Um, but the bulk of the show, of course, is made in rehearsal spaces. Um, Peter Mumford, for this reason, describes lighting as the last creative act in the theatre. Um, which doesn't mean, I think, that it should be simply tagged on at the end. Um, you know, lighting needs to work with everything else, but should also, I think, add something um, that that wouldn't otherwise happen, right? Um, it needs to to be working, um, perhaps in a register that nothing else is working in, or kind of supporting or extending what's happening. Um, it should take the work further by virtue of its being there. Um, because it can, because light works in so many different, um, I think, exciting ways. Um, so I think, again, this speaks to a lot of what we're doing as designers um, much more broadly. Uh, Josef Svoboda, um, the pioneering designer, um, talks about this a lot, right? He writes about um, not wanting to repeat um, in design something that's been already said elsewhere. Right, so that it's not that it's for the writer or for the actors to provide all of the information and then we underline that information or reinforce it, but that, that there's something new happening um, with each kind of point of exchange. Um, so for me, this is both about how we constitute 
theatre aesthetics, which are inherently multimodal, right, working on um, through all of the senses and working through lots of different um, media, I suppose. Um, but also, I suppose, a deeper question of, you know, why we pursue the arts, why we should have um, or why we have design in certain shows or why design can um, contribute something um, new and exciting to a performance experience. It doesn't always do that, of course. There's lots of examples um, of lighting or of design that don't necessarily take us anywhere new. Um, but the potentiality is there and therefore to me feels exciting and worth thinking about. Um, so I'm really interested in, for example, Ellen de Sinaiki's research, um, where she's thinking about art and the arts in evolutionary terms, right, as a kind of deep-seated human trait, um, that art making or is a, a behaviour, um, a human behaviour of making special. Um, uh, which feels really interesting to me as a, a way of thinking about the role of the arts. Um, but also, I think, in, in terms of thinking about what's really happening in the kind of aesthetic offer, right? So getting beyond this idea of a backdrop or something that is slapped on um, to work that is being principally made elsewhere or in other forms. So there are absolutely buckets of different ways of thinking about what light is doing um, in performance or what it's for. Um, so, and this comes down, I think, in a lot of the literature to thinking about functions or purposes of light. Um, so for Richard Pilbrow, um, that's about selective visibility, revelation of form, composition and mood. Um, for Richard Palmer, it's about um, visibility, given circumstances, mood, colouring the stage picture, shaping space and form, focus, rhythm and style. Um, elsewhere, Yara Nabalafia identifies six grounds of representation in how light works, which include things like narrative and character, but also the sensation of light itself, you know, how it works as a, an experienced thing. Um, and at the, the top of his scale, um, abstracts or open meanings in terms of how we engage with light. Um, the Italian lighting designer Fabrizio Crisofulli identifies functions of light as shaping time and space, or to become a dramatic structure, um, or to serve as a means of unfolding or producing actions. Um, and that last framing to me seems really exciting in that um, it allows us to think of light not um, purely in terms of what it might look like, but in terms of what it might offer. So things that light can do, um, like rhythm, like shaping space, like colouring a stage picture, um, are pulled into um, more dramaturgical um, offers, which helps, I think, to um, uh, to explore the nature of light as a creative material, which is very much what I am interested in. Um, so there's a, there's a linking or a tendency to sort of link um, properties of light, kind of formal properties of light, with its purposes or uses, um, because of course um, light is a material that operates through its own materiality. Um, or through its perception, um, or through the ways that it transforms other things. Um, but again, as with everything, this is much more complex, much more nuanced, uh, much more strange than, than um, has always been accounted for, I think, in subject literature. So there's lots, for instance, in um, lighting books, about visibility, right? How we use light to create visibility or conditions of visibility um, in performance. Um, but of course, the way vision works um, is much more complex um, than is necessarily captured in the, the straight line that, that's perhaps assumed if we think about a function of light being making something visible. 
Um, there's a responsibility there, sure, that's something that you think about as a lighting designer. Um, but it's, uh, I think, a folly to assume a straight line between giving something to be seen and assuming how it might be seen. Um, Micah Blaker writes about ideas of visuality or practices of visuality and seeing in the theatre. Um, talking about how you know, necessarily visual experience is always bound up with um, cultural, historical and also imaginative practices, right? Um, uh, another quote that I will read to you. Uh, this is a situation in which what we think we see is the product of vision taking place according to the tacit rules of a specific scopic regime and within a relationship between the one seeing and what is seen. What seems to be just there to be seen is in fact rerouted through memory and fantasy, caught up in the threads of the unconscious and entangled with the passions. Um, so an audience are always doing more and more interesting things than simply taking mental photographs of what's in front of them. And if we add to this the transformative capacities of light, um, it becomes really clear that there's no neutral in performance light, um, never just allowing something to be seen as it is, but always inviting a visual experience to see something in a particular way. So as a lighting designer, um, I can't, nor would I want to, necessarily completely control what you see or how you see it, but I can provide a means um, or a medium in which visual experience can take place. Um, that's especially interesting to me in the context of the visual theatre that we make in Theatre V. For me, that's much more about inviting experiences of seeing, which also include feeling um, and movement, um, in the many kind of dimensions and senses involved in seeing visual theatre. Um, I'm much more interested in that experience than in delivering images. Um, we all see in different ways, but what we see and how we see it is always already embroiled with the transformative effects of light to one degree or another. So, turning now to my work with Theatre V, um, I suppose it is worth saying that um, much as in my research work I'm really advocating for the role of light as a material um, that is consequential in performance, something that actively contributes to a performance and how it is uh, constructed. Uh, but that's not to say that the practice of lighting design for me is about entering a kind of narrative power struggle um, or an insistence that light should be off doing its own thing. One of the real joys of thinking about light in this way is the ability to think about the ways that light collaborates with everything on stage, and um, just as I collaborate with fellow artists through the process. Um, I very specifically put the word touch in this in the title of this talk because it feels to me that there's a tangibility um, to light in the way that it has a relationship with everything else on stage. So the interesting thing for me um, is always how the constellation of elements come together in performance um, rather than an attempt to serve anything at the expense of the piece, right? Um, and certainly the work of Theatre V is very closely founded on the work of the actors. Uh, if anybody has also watched um, our artistic director Guillaume Puget's lecture on a chaîne de crew, um, you'll know that this idea from corporeal mime of the actor as a poet is really important to the work that we make in Theatre Re. And anyone who has been to a Theatre Re show will also know that the music the live music that our composer Alex Judd creates um, is a really vital part of that, the whole that we are experiencing. 
um, so the kind of feeling and storytelling that happens on quite multiple levels that involve music, involve the actors. So the task um, for lighting design in this context is about how, how I might um, draw on possibilities of light in a way that's in relationship with these other extremely strong pillars of the work. Um, or at least that's what I'm trying to do. Um, is we're all ultimately serving the goal, the same goal, which is the, the show itself. So what happens at the confluence of these elements. Um, I was recently asked the question, as I was thinking about this talk, um, I was asked the question, how do you go about cueing a show with no script? Which was a fascinating question to be asked, asked by the wonderful uh, designer, Emma Tompkins. So thank you, Emma. Um, but it was an exciting question to be asked because I think in lots of ways it cuts across so many of the concerns or the kinds of decisions that I find myself making um, when designing these shows. Um, so on one level, of course, although there isn't in a theatre re show a written script in the traditional sense, um, for me the actions of the performers or the actions of each scene absolutely constitute a performance text. And as much as there is a sense of play and dynamism from performance to performance, um, there's, a, there's a real rigour and precision in what the actors and the musicians are doing um, that, that provides the security that perhaps a written script might provide in other contexts. Um, so it means that the text of performance emerges, I think, physically and spatially um, without also having a parallel life as something that is written down um, in the way a more classic play might be. Um, but I also think that this idea of, I suppose, performance text versus performance script um, makes it possible to think about meaning um, in, in a different way. Right? So rather than thinking that the, the core meaning or meanings of a performance are initiated by a pre-written script um, that's then interpreted or indeed interrogated through performance, the, the meaning in a, in a show for me, the kind of the, um, the text of it, is carved out of the performance as it's happening um, in space and time. And that, for me, is really what it means to be a visual theatre company um, or to embrace visual theatre as a form. Um, what's important, I think, is that we are watching something unfold through the confluence of action, space, movement, gesture, music, lighting, stuff, objects, um, and so on and so on. Um, and that can be layered and textured and nuanced in precisely the, the same ways that we might think of spoken or, uh, or written language as containing multitudes. Um, but it, it means or it requires that that meaning emerges through what the actors are doing and how that is met by everything else. Um, this is one of the reasons I think that we are so interested in metaphor and in experience over, I suppose, direct representation. Which isn't to say that the work is abstract. Um, you know, the actions are generally extremely specific. Um, but it is to say that we're generally interested in finding ways that something specific might lead us to something bigger than itself. Uh, so much less the visual in visual theatre here is much less about creating a picture or a postcard of something um, uh, and much more about inviting an experience in which meaning resides in the materiality of each moment. Um, so to come back to this question of cueing a show without a script, um, to me it's a process of creating a kind of score through the performance. That's about finding points of interaction between light and the actors, between light and the music, between light and space. Those points of interaction are usually 
much more to do with a relationship with what else is happening. Um, and light gets to have a relationship with everything else in performance. Um, so I, it's much less for me about creating an image um, or a set picture that I want you to see in a particular way, uh, but more about perhaps a flow of uh, light in and around what's happening. Um, so the kinds of decisions that I am often making in this context are about rhythm and shape, um, about how and when a body might meet the light. Um, so for example, light might mark the path that an actor takes through a space, or light might meet an actor on a journey. Um, you know, what light is doing in relation to everything else, and this might be quite subtle, um, but it's that relationality that's important. There's a huge difference, for instance, I think, between, for example, light that is fading into darkness while a piece of music is ending, and light that perhaps might push into brightness while music is um, ending or changing. Um, light that moves with an actor, or that changes while an actor is moving, feels very different to light that changes when an actor arrives at a new space. So you're always thinking about those relationships and how you're um, scripting, I suppose, the beats of light in relation to um, what else is happening. So the nature of the work um, means that the actors are carving out space very clearly, very specifically. Um, so there's a constant negotiation for me about um, thinking about how light responds to those shifts um, or how light might hold actors in space um, or shift space around them, right? Opening up or closing down um, as things are happening or sometimes slightly out of kilter with that. Um, so excitingly, I think that there's a, a, the opportunity to respond on a kind of moment by moment basis. Um, and again, if you've seen a theatre reshow, you will know that, that things change often very quickly. There's a, a density to the storytelling um, that means there's a kind of dramaturgical tracking through the piece, um, which light is equipped to do, um, I think in very particular ways, because it is material, visual um, and temporal, right? It makes things unstable because things are, are shifting in light. Uh, so in birth, for example, um, the story we're following three generations of women in the same family. So we see really clear moments play out that take us through the history of that family. And on one level, we're moving through that history um, through a sequence of lived images, which are immediately recognisable as everyday moments. You know, a family having dinner, a baby being brought home, a child playing, an argument, a teenager rebelling. Um, and there's a sense, of course, in which time is shifting as we're following through those generations. But also, I think, a layering of time, um, as you know, in the play we follow um, the experience of Emily, who's our character in the present, um, that inside the experience she's living now, there is also the kernel of her mother and grandmother's experiences. Um, so, so there are points in that show where light is helping to mark those shifts in time, um, in the kind of fictional chrono chron chronology of time, but also um, marking the differences, right? Um, so points where we're simultaneously seeing someone in the present and the past, um, uh, or points where we're seeing time passing. But much more often than that kind of marker, temporally, the light is kind of holding or trying to hold performance time. Um, so to be sometimes exactly in rhythm with the actors or with the music, um, or layering a kind of rhythmic texture, right? So the light might lag slightly behind or lead uh, something, depending on how we're framing a particular moment, um, right? Again, the kind of dramaturgy of light here comes down to there being really quite powerful difference between 
liked the changes in order to um, be able to lead an actor to, to change thought or uh, change setting, um, or liked the changes after an actor has done that. Um, thinking about, um, you know, for me, there's often this question of who light is in a particular show or moment. You know, does it connect with the space that's holding the action or the character? Um, is it guiding or responding? Does it have an allegiance with a particular character or characters? Um, or does that shift? Um, in The Nature of Forgetting, for instance, for most of the show, we are sort of living with Tom, our main character. The light is living with him. It follows his consciousness, what's coming up for him or what's available to him. Um, so he starts, for instance, he will start to remember his school days um, and the light follows that thought to reveal the space in which that lives in his mind or on the stage. Um, and then in virtue of that light being there, he's able to remember more and it pulls more light into the space. Or there are moments in that play where a memory breaks or shifts away for him and the light um, maybe slips away from him or calls him back to the present or begins to um, show us perhaps other areas on the stage um, that he's not as aware of. So there's a kind of texture between um, the light and that character um, as a kind of affinity that the provides a lens through that show. What I'm thinking of is the minute by minute attentiveness to the unfolding of action um, is of course about really closely following what the actors are doing, but it's also about having um, a wider view of the action of a whole moment. Um, so thinking about what's at stake in each scene and how might light guide us through that um, or provide a counterpoint to it or provide a spark for the imagination as people are moving through it. You know, or when is light not reacting to a change? Or when is it responding differently? Um, or when does something start to disrupt or to be punctured or broken in particular ways? You're trying um, to make sure the light lives each moment as much as you can. Um, so that's a sense, the, in a sense, the, I suppose, an overview of a way of thinking um, about lighting design, right? Thinking about um, the kinds of decisions that knit together to make a show, um, or certainly for me, that do that. Um, uh, so it's not, of course, there's plenty of other sources that you might go to for thinking about um, how to start doing lighting design. Um, but I hope that this will be interesting in terms of thinking about how you might guide the decision-making processes, or at least telling you how I am in, in some ways guiding the decision-making processes in the context of Theatre Rees work. Um, as I say, plenty of space for further chat um, in the comments section. So I will see you there. Thank you for joining me.